Nikola. Hvala Nikola na ljubaznom uvodu. So yes, I decided to give my speech today in English because I wanted also our guests to understand everything and after this excellent lessons that we heard today I feel myself very much an amateur in this company so uh, when you're wrong, it's better to know it in many languages so that you're sure that uh, this is not a mistake. <laughs> but um, uh, anyway, uh, I uh, heard from Chesterton that uh, one way uh, to feel yourself at home is either to stay home or to go around the world and then return home. So I will try to uh, go around the world with you uh, around the world of energy and then uh, hopefully together we can return home and see what uh, uh, we are to do with uh, our own backyard. Uh, I will talk a little bit uh, about the history of uh, use of energy uh, by us of course and uh, what happens as a consequence of uh, our efforts. Also I will uh, touch Laudato Si and uh, some other topics uh, that I uh, feel as useful tools for me to try and uh, convince you that this is still maybe a topic of the spirit and not uh, exclusively the topic of the matter. So, uh, as uh, we know, uh, recently we uh, had a lot of breakthroughs and we had a lot of development in the last 200 years. Uh, with uh, the ways that how we use our tools and how we use something that we know for a long time. For example, uh, force of wind, uh, the hydro resources of rivers that we used for so long uh, in order to obtain mechanical work for us to produce flour and uh, to uh, uh, start uh, to feed ourselves better and so on. We used fire from the beginning. Uh, we know that photosynthesis is actually uh, growing our crops and growing uh, all the uh, life around us. And uh, we knew for quite a long time, although not in such sophisticated uh, way as in this picture, that we can uh, make a hot shower for ourselves if we have a dark uh, can and uh, fill with water. And in uh, 18th century, uh, at the end of it, we uh, started to use some other uh, fuels uh, to help us obtain both mechanical energy uh, in order for us to do some useful work and also uh, to heat ourselves. So uh, I usually like to uh, ask people, do you think do you really need gas or electricity? And the quick answer is nobody needs gas and electricity, but uh, all of us would like to uh, get in touch with our friends from Norway because they are doing some interesting work about Chesterton, or we would like uh, our house to be heated, or we would like to travel somewhere fast. So we need to use something in order to uh, help ourselves to get there, or to uh, have some kind of appliance or have internet, which is uh, the most complex system uh, in the history of humanity, the internet as such. And the other most complex system in the history of humanity is actually the energy system. Because uh, this is uh, actually the huge grid of uh, uh, very complex machines that uh, generate electricity for us. And they need to generate it exactly at the same time as we use it. So uh, what uh, happened in the last 200 years is that we developed uh, different ways, more and more efficient ways to uh, bring this uh, thing that we now take for granted uh, to us. So we uh, brought heating to our houses, we brought uh, lighting systems, the internet, and uh, then we realized that uh, this is a grand success and that actually uh, we found fuels, fossil fuels, for example coal and natural gas, and also uh, biomass and, uh, of course, oil. Uh, all those things uh, which can easily be transported to other locations, then other people can use it for similar uh, purposes we do. So uh, what we uh, achieved is a lot of 
light during the night. And all this light means use of electricity very heavily. It uh, means urbanization. It means a lot of transport on a daily basis, which uh, means that in all these areas, people live uh, in large number and they use a lot of energy in their uh, everyday life. In order to achieve this, we are moving uh, the fossil fuels, for example, oil through the oceans. So here we can only see those countries who, who produce and uh, transport oil around the globe. This is uh, a nice illustration which uh, shows you how many uh, lines of transport uh, by the sea we have. And 90% uh, of all transport by the sea is transport of goods. So only 10% is your travel around. And 40% of this 90% is transport of fuel. Which means if you change the fuel, you definitely change uh, what is going on all around the world in the waters. This, until recently, was a picture that uh, shows the trade flows of uh, natural gas and LNG. Now, of course, uh, uh, this uh, became a little bit obsolete as natural gas prices, due to our current uh, political crisis, became really, really high, which uh, immediately reflects on other markets. Now, uh, how are we doing? Uh, this is only a snapshot of last uh, 70 years, let's say, of emissions. You know, there is one definite thing about using fuel from the ground. Uh, if you burn something that uh, has har high carbon value, it will emit some CO2 or some other uh, particles. In, ca in case of coal, it can also be some sulfur Article, uh, particles and particulate matter and others. But CO2 is maybe especially interesting because we emit it in uh, so large uh, amount. And uh, we are doing this for the last 70 years especially. Uh, and this is different compared to other uh, periods of our history. Of course, uh, since uh, we started uh, to have our communities uh, uh, let's say, su uh, supplied by so much energy, we have a lot of success in health, have a lot of uh, success in uh, different appliances. Our life is completely different compared to the guys that uh, built that uh, windmill, for example. And there is, as a consequence of this success of ours, biologically, uh, more and more of us. And what uh, would you like for your brothers and sisters? Well to have the same opportunity, to have the same comforts of uh, everyday modern life that we have. And, of course, uh, in the last 70 years, we have very large biological success, but we also have very large emissions of uh, CO2 and other greenhouse gases. Now, of course, uh, many of these uh, um, compounds are naturally in the atmosphere. But, for example, for the CO2, we can say that these emissions are uh, increasing the concentration a little bit more than it would be uh, natural for us and for the, all the creatures that are now living. Because humans, we as such, were used to live at, for example, two to, to 300 ppm of CO2 in atmosphere. Now we are on 420. And for this uh, reason, in the last 10 years, basically, the whole scientific community uh, agrees that uh, uh, there is a human-caused uh, change in climate. Where, where does it come from? That depends on the country where you are in. For example, in the United States, electricity and heat, transport and buildings. So energy used in these sectors is predominant. Uh, similar to this in Norway. Uh, in Croatia, transport is dominant as we don't have so much uh, industry. That's the global outlay and influence of uh, our use of energy. Uh, for local issues, we have, for example, until recently, uh, we have used a lot of these kind of fuels in urban areas, which produced a lot of smog and a lot of particle emissions. Uh, of course, this is 
so local that we cannot ignore it because in global markets there is a lot of things that happen so far away from you that you cannot really grasp it and you, you don't feel a lot of it. But if you were in Los Angeles dur during the traffic jam until recently you would really feel it. Also in London in the 1960s and 70s uh, you would get seriously sick. That's why the Chinese were so used to masks even before Covid because uh, up until uh, five to seven years ago, uh, coal in, uh, for produ production of electricity was something acceptable in large cities in China. Now it's not anymore. In Europe we have, of course, uh, areas where uh, different fuels are used more or less, and we have the different quality of air as a consequence. So we have, uh, of course, uh, differences in some countries that uh, uh, use a lot of lignite, a lot of coal in different ways, and uh, some analysis were made to uh, check the quality of air, and it's quite convincing. Now, uh, how this situation uh, seems like it requires some management uh, from us, and uh, as we know, we are uh, put by the Lord, actually, in the position of uh, someone who should manage the garden. So not uh, to go wild around the garden and not manage it properly. Uh, we are having, like, maybe two problematic groups. One who just wants to uh, go wild around the garden, and the others who, in, as Cheston would say it, maybe uh, try to be focused on some virtue, but this virtue is going a little bit nuts by itself, because it's not grounded in a proper framework. So, for example, and also uh, you can get uh, different hy hysterical uh, uh, reactions on the current uh, problematic. So it's not really what uh, one would uh, look for. It's r uh, rarely you can say, uh, try to solve some serious issue by hysterical behavior. But uh, if uh, you actually produce a, a decent, uh, uh, let's say, framework to solve it, then it might be possible. And uh, I would like to uh, hint with this uh, that maybe it's time to uh, take back uh, the responsibility for uh, these kind of issues worldwide from uh, some hysterical groups to uh, the groups that, that will be uh, productive and focused on uh, real management of uh, our uh, common garden. For example, Laudato Si might be a good uh, framework to uh, focus our attention to, and to res a response to the cry of the earth and also to the cry of the poor, because uh, now we have resources to uh, handle so many of the issues, but we need better management in order to distribute it. And I don't mean uh, collectively as uh, it was said before, I uh, mean it as a personal initiative. And uh, uh, I must say, in, in uh, doing, while doing research for this uh, speech, I uh, encountered a lot of very interesting initiatives uh, that are connected to Laudato Si. Not so much in Europe, but uh, in uh, other continents. This is maybe a consequence of uh, Europe having a different framework in support of different initiatives. So we get a lot of... Uh, European money for addressing the climate change is issues and so on, but in other parts of the world we can see our uh, uh, brothers and sisters, Christians, Catholic uh, organizations that are uh, forming action plans and uh, taking action in uh, correspondence to Laudato Si. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what is mostly predominant maybe also in scientific uh, circles and uh, currently in activist circles is uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, way of dealing with these issues in the framework of uh, cultural materialism, more or less, which uh, is uh, something that was defined by Marvin Harris in the 1960s. So, materials and conditions in the environment influence how the culture develops, creates the ideas and ideolo ideology of the culture. Now, this uh, seems uh, to correspond relatively well to some situations, but it doesn't uh, produce really substantial change. What, wh when having this in mind, what is sustainability? So, 
so it should be a paradigm that uh, uh, thinks about the future in which environmental, societal, and economic considerations are balanced in the pursuit of an improvement quality of life. Huh. But quality of life also encompasses meaning, and uh, it is important to have in mind what is our purpose in, in dealing with these problems. Okay, so uh, maybe some uh, uh, useful line for you to think about is the CHI identity, which uh, uh, helps us to define what uh, courses of action are uh, appropriate for this particular issue, which says that CO2 emissions actually come by the population and are in connection with GDP. So if we increase our economic production, some emissions will follow. In the case, we use some fuel that emits. Also, uh, primary energy uh, slash GDP, that means energy efficiency. Uh, the smarter we get, the, the more uh, efficiently we use uh, things to uh, achieve our economic growth, the less emissions we will produce by it. And also CO2 emissions per primary energy, that means exactly uh, what kind of fuels we use. If we use coal, this will be a very important factor. If we use uh, hydro, then no. So, uh, in uh, my line of work, we mostly focus on the last part. So, we are trying to see which kind of technology we can use to reduce carbon intensity. So, the amount of uh, emissions that we produce by using fuels, by using technologies. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, up, till, up until yesterday, and maybe today, we, are, we were living in the centralized power systems. And this is uh, basically your everyday life. You see a power socket, you use it, and you don't know what's behind. It, it doesn't concern you. Uh, in the future, uh, as far as it seems right now, you will move uh, more to the left, and you will live in some system which uh, requires a little bit more care from you, but also offers you to be the owner of uh, the production and to be the owner of some uh, technology that uh, will uh, have influence in the system. Now, okay, will you do it yourself? There is a number of things you can try, and uh, it's always a popular story when some guy in Africa creates his own wind uh, uh, power plants and similar. But the truth is that it's a very complex system. So uh, one thing that uh, might be more important than uh, these kind of solutions is that we need to do it together. Because uh, when we do it together, we can uh, also be local, we can use our local uh, potential uh, to maybe return a little bit in the area before uh, 1750, but in a much smarter way today. And in that way, we can maybe get back to this uh, particular factor and reduce it very, very significantly. Now, uh, that means actually kind of a democratization of energy. This is uh, one of the words that is uh, popular in uh, Europe. But it's really something that can work uh, also for our uh, communities. So it enables private persons to become owners of their energy production. Now, uh, maybe one fun fact, uh, especially for our guests. Uh, we in Croatia were on the front line of uh, alternative card uh, implementation. So in, in 1895, the first complete alternating electrical power system in Croatia was put in operation. It was the first uh, system that connected some renewable energy using alternative current with uh, public lighting in the city of Šibenik. So this was uh, done according to the uh, Nikola Tesla's patents, and it was actually operational as a whole system before the Niagara Falls hydropower plant. Although Niagara uh, Falls hydropower plant, the first Tesla's uh, hydropower plant with alternative current, was completed just the power plant two days before. So we were on the front, and we should uh, get back there. So these, these were the guys that uh, uh, installed uh, this plant. So. 
uh, instead of conclusion, maybe just uh, let's uh, try to see how we can uh, use our uh, living area together. And maybe this is the quest which we can take back and become the managers of uh, our garden. So thank you very much.